Hey everybody, Techie101 here, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of the Roses for PlayStation 2. Alright, so this will be uh, episode number two. Last time we be, uh, started the game, of course, and uh, I will admit the intro of this game did drag on. I mean, I, I was even getting bored with a lot of dialogue at the time, but I think that's the only reason is because it's steeped in actual historical events. So maybe the developers of the game felt like not everybody is well-versed in the history of the War of the Roses. I mean, right, obviously, right? I mean, everybody knows about that shit. Uh, I'll be honest with you. When I bought this game or rented it when I was a kid, I had no idea what the hell they were even talking about. So maybe that's the reason why they felt like they had to dump so much exposition on us here. Uh, but essentially, yeah, we were summoned to Stonehenge by, by uh, Simon McMoron, who is uh, a member of the Lancastrians working for Yugi, or Henry Tudor in this universe. And basically, he was he summoned us as the Rose Duelist because we are supposed to be like the Child of Prophecy sort of deal to help the Lancastrians win the war against the Yorkists, who are currently winning the war, are in kind of in charge of England at the moment. Um, and we were given the choice, actually, to side with either the Lancastrians and Yugi, or to side with the Yorkists along with Seto Kaiba and uh, Lord Crawford, who is uh, Maximilian Pegasus, led by Richard III, who was Shin. And, uh, yeah, we went with, uh, Kaiba. We went with the, with the, uh, Yorkists, because I've always wanted to play the bad guy in games. I'm, I love games that give you the option to do that. And, uh, also he has pretty cool armor, which is a thing. Um, but yeah, so we've just made our decision, so let's see what the, uh, the consequences of that decision is. A wise choice duelist. I see you are well versed in judging a situation, individual. Welcome to the Rose Crusaders. I am honored. Yeah, I'm sure you are, man. Okay, old man, it's time to make yourself scarce. So we literally just kind of... Oh, shit, he, he, like, he evaporated Simon. What, what are you doing? Stop! No! I guess we killed him. Eh, whatever. Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. I just need you out of the way until everything is settled. Um, you're still not explaining how you just managed to banish him to the ether there. Uh, C. Rosencruz. Now let's talk about the Red Rose cards. Simon mentioned that he spread the cards among certain individuals just after summoning you. That still doesn't make any damn sense. We were just summoned to Stonehenge mere minutes ago, and already Simon threw out the Rose cards to, like, the eight chosen warriors of Yugi's court, and then they had time to, you know, run away from Stonehenge. I don't get that. Even though when, si when uh, Seto or Rosencruz arrived, he stated that the area was surrounded with his forces, so whatever. By the way, the, the Stonehenge is in fact in Yorkist territory, so um, the Lancastrians were actually risking a lot coming here. Uh, but anyway, I think it's safe to assume that a large number of those individuals are his confederates, currently located in France. I would like you to ask you to enter France from Dover and retrieve those cards for our cause. I would go myself. However, I'm needed here to maintain our barrier against my invading force. Oh, screw you, man. Part of the reason I went with the Yorkists is because you guys were winning already. So basically, no matter which side you pick, I'm going to be doing most of the legwork here. If I go with the Lancastrians, it's like they're losing the war, so they need my help. So that's why I have to lend them a hand. I'm going to be their driving force. But the Yorkists are apparently already winning, but they're too busy maintaining their borders, so I have to go off on like a freaking suicide mission by myself. Okay, thanks here, Seto. According to the legend, one must use a deck whose cost is lower than the opponent's to capture a rose card. Okay, he's referring to a new mechanic in this game called deck cost, and he brings it up vaguely here, but I will explain that when we get to the map screen and we get to see exactly how all the layout of this game works. Uh, remember a deck cost? Yeah, I will explain this all to the game, to the, uh, to the uh, listeners out there, Seto. It's cool. I got this. Okay, this would mean that our enemy Yugi, who comes from a line of Welsh nobility, would likely have inherited one of the Red Rose cards. You mean we're gonna have to fight Yugi? Holy shit, I didn't think of that when I decided to fight against Yugi. This means that those who oppose the Rose Crusaders are sufficiently equipped to duel against us as equals. He's not wrong. Um, even, like, the first few duels here, which you think are going to be, like, really easy, like they were in Forbidden Memory. See, this, this game really values, I guess, uh, quantity over, I mean, quality over quantity. Because whereas in Forbidden Memories, you dueled a lot of people throughout the course of that game, uh, you only duel about eight people here, because all you need to get is the Red Rose cards, and there's eight of those. And there might be, like, a final boss stage, I believe. But there's really not many more duels beyond that. Um, and there, there's a post-game thing you can do. But So for the most part, though, for the main campaign of the game, you're only having eight or nine duels. Now, these duels, though, like I said, are not like your typical duels. They are very different indeed. So, with that being said, uh, they last much longer, and, uh, so even though there's only gonna be eight or nine of them, you'll, you're, you're gonna get your money's worth. Actually, I'm gonna hurry up here, uh, blah blah blah, I'm gonna underestimate you, I'm depending on you, whatever, don't underestimate them, I should say. 
All right, so with that, we head immediately to the map screen. So here we are, and of course, this is uh, a realistic map of England or the UK. Uh, here's Ireland up here, Scotland up here. We don't actually use much of this map. As you can see, most of it is um, kind of like amber seas, all right, or maybe seas of gold, seas of lava. I don't know. But yeah, we don't do anything up here, so I don't know why the map extends this far. I guess just to show... England and all the UK and all its glory. Um, that's a weird island. What's that island's name? Someone tell me what that island's name is. Looks interesting. We don't go there. I just want to know. And then, of course, we have France down here with the big Lancastrian seal, which is where the two doors lie. And we will be heading down eventually. Uh, but anyway, here is our deck leader or deck master, Robotic Knight. He's going to be basically our uh, main our main guy for the game. He's going to be like our avatar. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see some information here, uh, some wins and losses, which will be keep track. Uh, the number of rose cards we have. We already have the uh, eight white rose cards, so we need to get the eight red rose cards. That'll just keep track of that for us. Um, we see right there next to our... Uh, right under our name, there's that green DC. Now, that's the deck cost that uh, Rosencruz was talking about. The deck cost in this game is a mechanic that gets involved whenever you add cards to your deck or take cards out of them, of your deck. Um, so, the, basically, the, the gist is the stronger cards you put in your deck, which it's easier to get stronger cards in this game, but if you just throw the strongest cards in your deck, your deck cost is going to go up. The downside to that is is that it doesn't really affect your dueling capabilities, but as um, Seto said, if you duel against somebody with a higher deck cost and you beat them, you will not receive a red rose card, and that's the whole point of the game. So we have to duel against people with a lower deck cost. As you can see here at Windsor Castle, where our first duelist is going to be Taya, and she has a deck cost of 933, which is higher than ours, so we can duel her just as we are right now. Which makes sense, because we have not yet won any cards, and we can't add anything. So with that being said, uh, if you hit start, you'll head down here to this little mini menu. And, you know, you can save your game, you can option, help screen, but we want to look at our deck, so let's go check that out. Uh, now, this screen right away... This is one of the reasons that made me just put down this game when I rented it as a kid, because this game looks so goddamn confusing. I can assure you it is not. The only reason why it looks so calm, it's actually very similar to Forbidden Memories. It's just that while in Forbidden Memories, uh, whenever you had the screen where you were viewing your deck and your chest, they were separate screens that you could switch back and forth. In this game, they've condensed them down to simply one screen, and, and that's just all there is to it. So we have their chest here to the left, which is all the cards that we uh, will gain in the game. And uh, it's empty right now because all the cards that we have are currently in our deck. Uh, which is on the right side of the screen. And now at the top here, you can see how you sort, and that's all these symbols are, so that's just sorting capabilities. It's actually, it's more better than Forbidden Memories, because this actually tells you, you know, by name, by attack, by defense, type, attribute, um, even the color of the card. Now, um, I'm trying to think of something else to bring up. Uh, at the bottom here, you see that there's deck A, B and C, uh, that's simply like other decks we can have. We can have up to three decks in this game that we can switch back and forth if we so choose, so that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, if you hit triangle, you can look at the card's uh, stats, uh, which is uh, cool because we do have effect cards in this game, something that we did not have in Forbidden Memories. Let's look at our deck leader, which is Robotic Knight, of course. Now, because he is our deck leader, we're not really going to be using him as a standalone card, so that attack and defense and his special ability, we can kind of disregard that because he's not really you know, going to be used in that way. So as you can see, though, he has something interesting, which is a um, kind of a... Underneath his picture there, you see that 2LT. He has a rank as a deck leader, and this rank works basically like a rank in the military. Right now, he's a second lieutenant, but you can go up to first lieutenant, captain, you know, and, and be on general, and I guess you can keep going up. And the point of that rank is the higher up that you go... Uh, you will actually get better abilities in terms of a deck leader ability, because each deck leader has a unique ability, and the, and the ability gets more improved upon uh, as you increase your uh, rank. So there's that, and you can view him here as the 3D area, which is really cool. Really cool guy. Hold on, am I gonna... Yeah, there we go, see? So that, that's, his, uh, that's his normal effect if he was just a standalone card, but he is not. His leader ability does not have one yet, but he probably will gain one when he gains rank. So that's that. Uh, other than that, uh, I really don't have anything else to show you in terms of that. There's, that's our deck. That's what we have. We don't have any new cards yet. So now we're going to go and we're going to duel Taya. 
Now this, I'm just telling you right now, is going to be a long-ass duel. These are not the same kind of duels that we can just win in one or two turns, like in Forbidden Memories. So I'm just saying, strap in, get some freaking uh, snacks and some popcorn and something to drink, because we're probably going to be here for a while. I'm going to try to knock out one duel per episode, and I'm sorry for delaying you so far, but I really had to explain how the deck costs and what's in our deck and everything, so let's just get right into it now. Taya, the Rose Duelist. You dared betray our hopes of Prince Yugi. How dare you betray friendship? I'll teach you a lesson you'll never forget. All right, here we go. We're dueling Taya, but once again, do not, do not underestimate her. She is no slouch. Gotta love that nice music. I love that. Nice piano going on. We're probably gonna be sick of it, but after a while, but I... Oh, what the fuck? Um, why is the lair off the... Hold on. Okay, there we go. My emulator was not displaying a, a lair there or something. That was freaky. All right, so um, I'm just gonna pull that away so you can check out the board. Um, as you can see, <laughs> if you've never played this game before, you're looking at this like, what the fuck? Okay, well, some people have likened it to Yu-Gi-Oh! Chess. Which is very similar to chess, just the grid pattern of the game, uh, as well as us having a deck leader. So this is like our king, and this is the opposite king. This is Taya's um, deck leader, which is Dancing Elf, um, which is very weak. But like I said, it's a, as the deck leader doesn't really get involved in battle too much. Um, so there's so much involved here, I really can't just stall and just explain. I'm just going to have to jump right into it, and I'll explain as I go. So anyway, every turn you start with your deck leader. You scroll your cursor on top of your deck leader to summon a card. Hit square, and then you can summon any card you want in the spaces provided. So, this is our hand, and we have, let's see here, we have an effect card. What does Bat do? When this card is flipped face up, there's a Jigen Bakudan in any adjacent, but we don't have a Jigen Bakudan, so that's completely useless. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to summon Unknown Warrior Fiend. So you hit Enter, and now, hit Enter again to summon. Now, you can do a number of things with this. You can move it, okay, or I could, if I so chose, I could set it in defense mode. Uh, but if you set it in defense mode, you cannot move the card as it's in defense mode. And you can also flip it face up as well. So for right now, though, I'm just going to leave it face down, and I'm going to move it... Uh, hold on. Oh, I already ended the turn. Sorry, that was my bad. But I could move it forward if I so chose. And there's really nothing else I can do, so I'm just going to end my turn. And just like chess, uh, your opponent cannot attack you directly on your first few turns. You're going to have to take those few precious turns to set up what's going on. Uh, take advantage of the terrain. As you can see here, the field, it tells you uh, different aspects of the field. That should be pretty straightforward. Certain monsters get boost depending on what part of the field they're standing on. As you can see, we have a mountain field here, which would probably favor dragons and, uh, and I think even fairies and stuff. And then meadow, which will favor warriors and shit. Um, so if you've played Yu-Gi-Oh, you at least know Matt much. So, I'm going to move Unknown Warrior Fiend forward, and I'm going to go on my deck leader again, and I'm going to summon yet another card. And let's see what we got this time. Okay, we drew Cyber Commander. What's his effect? His effect is, while this card is faced upon the field in defense position, the strength of all your machine monsters are increased by 300 bonus points. All right, well, then I'm going to throw him out there in face-up defense position then, because that's a good card. Now, how you summon cards... At the top right of the screen, you can see there's that little info box that has my life points in it and the number of cards I have in my deck. There's a star there, and it has a four next to it. We get three levels every turn. We get three added to that. So you notice I started with four. When I summoned my Unknown Warrior of Fiend, it went down to one, and then went back to three. That star is how many uh, stars the monster's allowed to have that I can summon. If I have four stars, I can only summon up to a level four monster. If I want to summon stronger monsters, uh, I don't have to sacrifice or anything like I do in regular Yu-Gi-Oh! But I will have to wait until I gain enough stars. So sometimes you might not have to summon anything just to uh, make sure you build up enough stars. So I'm going to flip face up Cyber Commander and flip him in defense mode. And I'm going to end that. And he pops out there, little avatar. And I move Unknown Warrior Fiend forward. So once again, there's nothing I can do, so I'm going to end my turn. It won't be for the first two or three turns where you can't attack anybody. It's just you won't reach you in time. So just take these turns to build up your strength. So, you can move your deck leader as well. And you can use this to take advantage of how you can summon. All right, what's up? Okay, there we go. See, we got a machine monster, and that is powered up by Cyber Commander. which is uh, actually weaker, in fact, there. See? We got 300 extra points. Alright, I'm gonna move Unknown Warrior Fiend forward. 
Hold on a second, guys. Okay. I'm gonna keep Cyber Commander where he is because he's completely useless in a battle. And I'm gonna end my turn. And now next turn, or maybe this turn, we'll finally get to see what a battle it looks like. Alright, let's see what we got. Okay, so she is attacking my unknown warrior fiend with ray and temperature effect activated. So what's that? Oh, we have equal attack, so that means we're just gonna kill each other. Okay. All right, so this is something else that's pretty damn cool. I'm gonna shut up here for a second because this is fucking awesome. Ooh, love the animations in this game. Oh crap! I'm freezing to death. Whoa! I'm getting sucked into the time vortex! Whoa. Oh, fuck yeah! That was an awesome death sound. Alright, so as you can tell, the 3D animations in this game are quite a big step up from Forbidden Memories in many ways. Um... The arena looks better, the animations of the monsters look better, sound effects look way better, everything is just approved upon and I love it. In fact, apparently the designers must have loved it too. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna kill each other. The designers of the game must have loved it too, because they set the animation to be the default, as in every single time we fight a monster it's gonna be a default for the uh, animation to play. Uh, and I'm actually gonna go into L1 here and you can actually set it to abbreviate which will change the uh, so you just, you know, fight like normal instead of taking up, you know, several minutes every single time. Move Brave Scissor forward. And let's see, who can I summon next? Actually, hold on. Oh, Limiter Removal, that's a good card. I'm going to activate that. Limiter Removal boosts, I believe, every machine monster on the field by 600 points, I think. Well, let's go check it out. Now, even Magic and Trap cards play to the same rules as monsters. I can even, if I really wanted to, I can even set this magic card in defense position, which is completely unheard of, of course, in Yu-Gi-Oh!, but it works perfectly fine. That's great for traps, because um, your opponent will maybe attack a card thinking it's a card in defense position when it's really a trap card and you'll get affected. But I'm going to flip it face up and activate Limiter Removal, which will increase my, bl my Blade Scissors attacks, as well as Cyber Commander, by 600 points. So now Cyber Commander already has 1,650 attack, and Blade... Oh, no! Yeah, 2,200. Yeah, okay, so there we go. It was 600 for each of them. All right, cool. So, uh... Yeah, we have everything set. I don't think I can do anything else. All right, okay. I can even go into Battle of Cyber Commander now. But don't... Uh, keep in mind, Taya does have strong cards, too. Uh, well over the 2,000 range, quite easily. Let's see what we got here. Aha! You got destroyed! There's another element to this game, too, I'll bring up when we get to it. It's spellbinding, but it has not happened yet, so I don't want to overload your sensors with more shit than you need. Alright. Now, it is a little bit dangerous. I do not recommend using your deck leader in this way. I'm moving him really far into the board, but this is the first duel, and um, I don't really think I'm in any major danger. But if you get your deck leader attacked directly, it's the same as attacking your life points directly. Um, so just calculate, you know, Robotic Knight's attack and defense, it doesn't even factor in, it's just direct attacks on your life points. Um, alright, what do we got here? We got Rock Ogre Grotto 2, which I could throw out in defense position. Or I could summon Yurabi. Let's go with Yurabi. Alright. Okay, we're good. Let's see what Taya's gonna do. Something else is uh, you can still fuse in this game the same way you can fuse in Forbidden Memories. Um, I don't really know a lot of times I got really good cards fusioning in this game, but you know, you could try it out if that's your thing. I'm gonna move Yurabi into position here. I'm gonna keep Robotic Knight. It's a very strategic game. You can't really just jump into it and just be like, I summon this, I throw this here, I move this here, because I mean, it's really like chess in that regard. You really need to think of your uh, choices before you do it. So, Hologram gets an attack boost, I believe. Or is that the same attack as it always has? Is that a machine? It is. Yeah. Yeah, we got, it got the boost from Cyber Commander. So, I'm gonna get rid of Zombie Warrior and Jinzo 7, and I'm going to summon uh, Holograph. Throw him out there. Keep him in attack mode. I'm gonna move him forward as well. Actually, I'm gonna move him to the side in case they try to do something a little squirrely. In case they get a little squirrely on me, you know what I mean? 
But yeah, these duels can last a long ass time. I mean, I'm making pretty good progress so far, and I know I'm saying that even though I haven't really gotten to major conflict, but we're gonna get into some conflict here. Oh, another dancing elf, really? Wow, you're a bit, you're an idiot right there. That's, uh, you're not smart. Okay, so now it's our turn. She's already down to 1800. Uh, and we can actually attack her life points directly now because her dancing elf is right there. So I'm going to move Blade Scissor into position. Brave Scissor, sorry. Holograph uh, over here. I'm going to summon with... Let's see what we got. We got Cyber Stein. I think does... An oh, we might be... Oh, uh, no, I can't because Yurabi is not a machine. But I can throw out Cyber Stein here. Actually, I don't think he... Does he have the bonus? Transforms occupied space into wasteland when engaged in battle. Now nah, that's nah, that doesn't work. Uh, I will throw out Masaki then, the legendary swordsman. I will move him. He'll actually get the bonus from the meadow field, so I'll move him over here. But I don't think we'll need him because I'm going to attack her life points directly with Yurabi. Boom! See right there. So she's already down to 300. Um, I think we don't have a problem here. Now Taya does have some magic cards that replenish her life points and she's gonna start retreating of course and she's gonna try attacking no she's just on the fucking defensive here yeah she's moving out of the way oh bitch Gwentaki no Omega me all right so that's gonna give her cards a power bonus there and like I said 1800 attack that's not kidding around when this card is faced up all of your own monsters with an attack of a thousand or below are increased by a thousand points. Okay, so that's that's not too scary. Eh, maybe a little bit, but we have Brave Scissor, because the most attack they could have is two thousand. Wait, does it say two thousand or less or just two thousand? An attack of one thousand or below, okay, so the most any card could have on the field right now is two thousand points, and we do not have that. I'm gonna make Plomasaki here who has sixteen hundred attack now. And I'm going to attack her card with Holograph. Oh, see, Skalangle originally had 900 attack, but now thanks to Giantaki and Megami, got boosted all the way up to 1900. That's kind of OP, if I do say it myself, and I just did. Oh. You know what? I don't think I'm going to move. I'm scared. Not really. Let's see. Now, I cannot summon Pendulum Machine because it is a six star monster, and I do. Oh, wait, no, seven. Wait, six or six? Yeah, six. And I only have five. So I'm actually not going to summon a card this turn. And I'm just going to move my uh, deck leader. I guess I can't. Yeah. Whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm going to move Yurabi over here into position. Brave Scissor over here. And end. That freaking good talking to Omega Me, man. What are you doing? What? Oh, she overlapped Gantakimo. Yeah, you can do that. You can... Uh, move cards over other cards and overlap them, but I do not know why she chose to do that, because Yantakimo is a pretty strong card. I'm getting my ass kicked by a freaking Skalengle, man. That is not cool. I even had the power bonus and everything. Oh, bitch. See, that, like I said, that's going to increase your life points by what, 800? Or 1,000? 2,000? Fuck! Oh, it's on now. It is on like fucking Donkey Kong. Oh, we gotta, we gotta, she's not fun. This is not fun. This isn't good. You can be freaking squirrely with your freaking life points. We're backing her into her corner. We need to we need to do something about this. This ain't cool. This is not cool. I'm gonna summon Pendulum Machine. Fuck your shit up. Take out that Skalungle. Okay. Alright. Got you got got that thing taken care of. Oh, did I get spellbound? What happened? What was that? Uh, I didn't get spellbound. I don't know what the hell that was. Huh, weird. Okay, uh, well, I'll worry about that if it uh, comes into play later. Alright, I'll end my turn, I guess. Okay, she's back into a corner, which is good with what we wanted. Oh, shit! What's she doing? I don't like this. She's getting, she's getting clever on me. She's getting fucking Clara Oswald on my ass. Oh, man. Doma! Damn, that's even stronger than my pendulum machine. Shit. But Brave Scissor's right there, so he should be able to take it. Yeah, he's good. Alright. Okay, I'm backing you into a corner while I can. Alright, what do we got? Oh, we got Stone, uh, Steel Ogre, Grotta 2. Alright, so that's a pretty strong card, but he's level 5. I cannot summon him at the moment. I'm gonna take another pass on summoning from this turn. I'm gonna use Brave Scissor. Attack. Doma. Okay, take that down. 
That's a good thing we got that freaking limiter removal when we did. I don't know what the hell else we would have done there. Pendulum machine, move him over here. And I think I've successfully, for the most part, boxed in her deck leader. She, she's going to throw up some cards as just defense because she can't really go anywhere. Yeah. All right. Uh, well... Uh, what are our options here? Keep moving Brave Scissor over. That's really all we can do at the moment with him. We cannot move diagonally. That's the pain in the ass. Alright, if I move... If I move Pendulum here, then she's going to have no choice but to go forward. So... If I do this... Summon Stale Ogre then attack this thing, whatever the fuck that's gonna be. I'm gonna be able to kill it, I can tell you that. Another Dancing Elf. 900, taken care of. Alright, she is pretty much boxed in. I do not think she can do anything here. She can throw cards in Oh yeah, she's done. She could have attacked me directly there, couldn't she? Eh, whatever. I don't care. I won. Attack! Ba ba bam! So there we go. Now that was a relatively short duel, believe it or not. Um, but as you can see how long that was, you can get a grasp for uh, what we're uh, in for for the rest of this game. So yes, we indeed win. And what's going to be a little interesting thing, at the ending of each duel, we're going to get the graveyard slots, which is pretty damn cool concept. So the graveyard slots is pretty much every card that was played in this game, or exists in the graveyard, I should say, uh, is going to be available here in the graveyard slots. And that includes magic, trap, spell, uh, I mean, spell, trap, and monster. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is, and I think even the deck leaders are included in this. All right, so basically, uh, we just hit the buttons on the bottom and we stop the slots now if we get three cards in a row we only win that card but we get a bonus card which is even better so actually we could win three completely different separate cards if we so choose but if we get three of the same we'll only win one card here but we'll get an additional better card so I'm gonna aim for that uh, silver bow and arrow because it looks like an easy enough target ah, I missed it but I got dancing elf but hey there's multiple dancing elves so I think we're good Ah, fuck, I fucked it up already. Well, okay, so we're gonna get Dancing Elf, which sucks, Skalangle, which is kind of okay, it has a neat effect, and then Doma, which is a pretty good card, because 1600 attack. So there we go. So we defeated Taya, and we received her Red Rose card, because our deck cost was in fact lower than hers. I guess I lost. It pains me to know that I lack the strength to protect my lord and love. Oh, whoa, lord and love, okay. The ships are setting sail today. More ships are setting sail today. More than just uh, from England to France, let me tell you that much. So our next stop on our little trip is going to be London, where we're going to be taking on T. Tristan Gray. I don't think relation to Christian Gray? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But as you can see on the bottom here, we received our one rose card. So I'm going to be ending it here because this episode's already long enough. But like I said, get ready for some long episodes. We're talking 40, 50 minutes is probably going to be the average length for one of these. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. This will be Techie 101, signing out. Hope your brain didn't explode too bad. Later, guys.